different uh, settings here uh, for the straight and the zigzag. Uh, and it shows you in the in the book exactly what what to do, and your your tension is the thing. Your bobbin winding. Once you push it to the right, that put, takes it out of the the needle shaft uh, movement. And uh, once it's full, it'll it'll stop. You also have what they call the top pressure release. This is very important. Uh, this gives you a lot of pressure on the foot, uh, and sometimes. You don't need all that pressure. If you're just sewing the normal stuff and that, uh, even some of the vinyl, and some uh, of the leather, you might make some little marks for the feed dogs. Then you want to release this here and just turn it uh, so it's not so tight. And that uh, journey will alleviate any problems uh, of making any marks on, on the leather. Okay, I think... Uh, we're good to go in that respect. There's one other thing that um, I'm going to show you uh, and just in case that uh, we have situations where a customer will overdo something and turn something the wrong way or put something underneath there and then, and then uh, possibly throw the position of the needle uh, out of position. And what happens is that the needle could start hitting the edge of the needle plate. Well, there's, uh, then that means it's out of alignment. Uh, it's a very quick fix. All we have to do is, uh, let me move this little plug here. And I'm going to turn this around. And I'm going to remove the screw here. Let's see if I got the right screwdriver. I think I need the Phillips. You want to grab me a Phillips, Katie? And just uh, take and use the Phillips screwdriver and remove this. Remove this little slide. Oh, <laughs> I should have had this done. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay. On the back of the manual it does show you how to remove this. Let me get this back into position. And let me get a little light here. So you notice that the needle shaft, in fact, let me just take this thread loose here. You don't need to have that there. Okay. If you just follow my light here, here is the screw adjustment for that swing of the. Um, needle. And you'll notice you can go left or right. Okay, here we go. Okay, I want you to see the needle movement. Do you see it moving? Is it moving there, Katie? Katie is my, yes, my film director here. <laughs> see? Yep. See it? Mm -hmm. Alright, now is it moving back and forth, front to back? Do you see that needle? Is it going front or back? Towards the front? Front. Huh? Front. Okay. So what you need to do is it's just like an eccentric here. And you want to get it into the center of the opening here. Plus you want to gauge it to where it's in the center on the back side as well. There we go. Okay. So that's what that's all you have to do. Once you do that, got it all lined up, you're good to go. Then we're going to put this little door back on. And uh, this is very simple. If you look at this door, you have this pin here. That's what they call the positioning. And you want to have that lined up like so. 
and then you just push down on it get it over here there's a little end clip push it forward okay make it lined up there and then we'll put that screw back in and that's how you make that adjustment it, it rarely happens but you just have to look at if it's hitting the needle plate then you know what's happened and so we just tightened up this back section here hold on let me get this back here take my good arm okay all right then we're, we're good to go um, if you're using just the smaller spools of thread uh, if you notice that uh, you will be getting uh, one of the um, Guterman spools uh, you might try it on here but make sure you leave this felt pad so it doesn't spin out of control um, and but th that should work uh, as well so other than that there uh, we want to also remember that you have the feed dogs that go up and down and there's the switch to raise and lower the feed dog so make sure if something's not right and nothing's feeding properly you want to check your dial on the front and also check to make sure your feed dog control is in the up position which is in the back side of the machine okay so now all we have to do is is um, if you notice and once you have the manual up it, it's very self-explanatory about where it's going here four is your longer stitch on this light gray area here you know nor normal is probably around two when I'm sewing the, the vinyl and leather I generally set it on four you have a reverse stitch but you do not go back in reverse uh, if you do go very slowly uh, generally when you get into leather and stuff of that nature just turn it around and, and go a couple stitches there are different techniques of uh, finishing off the edge of, of your finishing uh, product on your leather and a lot of times if you just have a little super glue at the end cut it real short and give it a dab or there's other clear glue uh, around Gorilla Glue and stuff of that nature uh, you'll notice here you've got uh, the white section over here and which is A, B, uh, A, B, uh, C to K and that those are all what they call reversible stitches so you just turn it to the A to K which is here and then you turn this according to the letter uh, and then you have like and there's an overcast stitch and there's uh, the double um, stitch there there's another overlock stitch you got actually one two uh, three then you got your blanket stitch or quilting stitch over here on the other section here which is L to S and you turn that up here to LS and then you get into these stitches and then the, these letters here is like B uh, which is referenced to here but so you go beyond that L if you want to go to um, L which is over where are we there it is there's L on 8 and you want to do an L on that one you just line up the L with 8 but you must have it on LS and then you just want your normal stitches, your blind hem, straight stitch. Uh, there's your stretch uh, blind hem. There's the triple stitch. Here's your another blind hem stitch, uh, which you can sew left or right. And then this is your graduated uh, width of the zigzag here. Okay, I think we're good to go. Um, the light switch and the power switch is on the, the right end here. Uh, if the light uh, doesn't come on, just uh, push the button there. And it's... Uh, everything is in the manual uh, read the manual of course watch the video you might have to watch the video a couple times three times uh, something's not going right retrace your steps rethread the machine uh, a lot of little things uh, if you strike the needle plate and break a needle make sure that uh, all of a sudden maybe it's uh, shredding or, or jamming uh, there's a couple things that can cause it. Uh, a, a nick on the side of the plate there can cause it. All you have to do is file it down with an emery cloth or you can use a diamond file. Uh, down inside here there's a shuttle 
and uh, it tells you how to remove the shuttle. You have to remove this needle plate and the shuttle is what holds the bobbin in place. That's your shuttle there. Uh, you can nick that that portion there which is like a, a, uh, a nylon in here that blacks the nylon and if you nick that there you just have to sort of buff it down a little bit uh, don't take a knife you can use a diamond file and smooth it down as long as you don't break off the the pickup point there's a little point at the end there as long as you don't break that off which is rare that happens then you'll be fine you can put it back in there and, and away you go okay folks well I think we've uh, done our, our, our segment on the machine here uh, we will be doing some more uh, detailed work uh, in the future. And good luck to you all. And if you have any further questions, you can always give us a call at 800-300-1917. Uh, good luck sewing, and we'll talk to you all later.